talking about, once again, everything, you know, spiritual gifts that were named previously. And it says, all these <coughs> are the work of the one and the same Spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now flip to 410. Now, well, I, I, I really like this passage of Scripture, too, and it says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it <coughs> with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ to him, be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Now, we've been studying, you know, quite a bit about spiritual gifts. And, you know, we, we've tackled the, the, the ones that, you know, felt, you know, in a lot of churches are, are misplaced. And that was uh, the, when the Holy Spirit did the gift of tongues and speaking in tongues and, and the, the gift of interpreting tongues and uh, the gift of prophecy. And we, we, we saw... And in Scripture, how that is for the body and it's for the upbuilding of the church. And we, we, we see that it's still useful, that it's still alive because we've, we haven't became uh, glorified yet. We haven't put on perfection yet. So we're still being uh, transformed and renewed in the image of God. And, and until, you know, we, we get that complete new body, right, until we, we, we see Jesus uh, face to face instead of, uh, of, instead of looking into a dim mirror, then we still need the gifts that the spirit has to offer amen our church body this body right here still needs all the gifts that the spirit has to offer and we looked at um what those were and we last or actually two weeks ago we looked at um some of the what i um titled the teaching gifts and what they were what what these gifts are for and we found out that there's a a foundation layers, right? And they, these were the apostles and their prophets who, who laid the foundation for us to build upon. And um, many, uh, many times they, they continue to, to, to lay the foundation of what we build on. Uh, there's still, a, I, I believe, prophets and we, uh, they're prophesying and people that's walking in a, um, a type of apostolic ministry where they're going and they're building churches, they're laying the foundation of what God has established, okay? They're not laying another foundation. They're keeping the Word of God true, and that's what they're building on. And then we had uh, what we call uh, the gospel spreaders, and these are the evangelists. These are the ones that are, are going out and, and telling people the news of Jesus Christ. And, and as I was thinking about this, and, you know, another type of evangelism, evangelism is missions, you know? Missions are, are, are part of evangelism. That They go out, they go to other places, and that just to tell people the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, to me, that is so awesome to get to do, to get to go out and tell people the good news. And the good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that, that God sent his son to die for us. Because there is no other hope. We could not be good enough. We could not, we, we could not perform the law perfect enough to, to somehow... Uh, uh, get to know God as he wants to get known. So what did God do? There was always this, this separation. So God sent his son, Jesus Christ, on the earth, who died for our sins. And when he died for our sins, he, he granted us that access to God. Now, because of that, you and I both, we get to have a one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God. We don't have to, there's not this big curtain that's separating us anymore. You know, we, we just get to enjoy his presence right now on earth. Isn't that beautiful? But we only get to do it in a part because we haven't seen it totally yet, right? It's just a part. I, I believe God just keeps giving us just little glimpses of himself just to keep us in awe and in wonder of who he is. And then we had the, the equippers, and these are the, the ones that, that our, the Holy Spirit has gifted to teach and to preach and to, to shepherd the body that God is uh, establishing. And uh, the, their primary role is to really equip this next people to and and do what God needs them to do to build the body that he has put together. And so um, I got real creative here, and I titled this the bodybuilders. Huh? 
and just so happened I had some bodybuilding snacks in my office today. Thank you very much. I thought it was going to be a sausage and egg biscuit. Thank you. It was something way better than that. I appreciate it. Um, but anyways, th these bodybuilders. Now, here, here's, here's some of the problem that I think that we, we have with our spiritual gifts. Sometimes we, we don't walk in our spiritual gifts because w we think that, um, well, let me say this. We take them for granted. God has given us a spiritual gift, and we've been uh, using it for a while, and, and so we've kind of gotten used to it. We've kind of gotten um, complacent with it, and so we, we just kind of just sit back, and we forget, and we forget to be thankful for what God has already given us. And so what happens when you get complacent is really you, you just stop using it because you think everything around you is okay, and, you know, that nothing needs to to happen you know the world's going pretty good your life may be going uh, relatively easy and you know you just get complacent in life and all of a sudden when you get complacent something happens that's when the attacks come and that's when you fall now that can uh, happen as an individual or it can happen as an entire church body it, it can we've seen it done and if you, all you got to do is look around a little bit and you can see churches that are falling because they've gotten complacent I really believe that's why so many churches are shutting their doors is because they have gone complacent in their role of what Christ has called them to do. He didn't call them just to stay here and just enjoy our little fellowship of Believer's Chapel, right? Just, hey, this is enough, people. We don't need to go out and evangelize. We don't need to go out and minister anymore. This is enough, you know. Just be content with what you have. So let this contentment lull you to sleep. You don't have to use your spiritual gifts because... You already got it all made, and it's all ready, so just be complacent and just do what you're doing. Just sit down on Sunday morning for, you know, a few short hours and get your Christian card punched, you know, and all of a sudden stuff starts to happen and the church starts to die, and all of a sudden you can't tell yourself different from anybody else in the world, and neither world looking at you. They, they really don't see Christ at all because you've gone complacent. That's why we need these spiritual gifts. That's why we need the Holy Spirit alive in our life. We, we need a, a, a renewing freshness of Him each and every day. Not just a, a, a Sunday or a Wednesday, but each and every day you get up. Man, you need the Holy Spirit to empower you to go out and walk and to serve in your spiritual gifts. Now, I'll say this. <sighs> What's the difference between a, a gift and a talent? They're both gifts from God. Okay, God has, and, and many times your spiritual gift can can boil over into your your uh, your job or whatever that uh, endeavor that you got going on, and it can be useful there. But um, mainly, the the spiritual gifts are uh, given to us by the Holy Spirit for the building up of the church. Now, our talents, which could be very similar to our gifts, they can be used anywhere. They can be used inside the church or outside the church. It's just something naturally talented in. Okay. And, and um, so they mirror each other, but they're a little bit different. A talent is something that can be used anywhere. Really, your spiritual gift will be magnified inside the body of Christ. That's where its pur purpose is for inside the body of Christ, to build, to strengthen, to encourage, and uh, not only the body, but our individual lives. And so, now the bodybuilders. Now, I... I think sometimes we, we overlook these. I think God has given us these and uh, for us to walk in, but a lot of times we overlook them and we don't think much about them because they're so easy. And the, the understanding of them is so straightforward in, in Scripture that sometimes we, we really forget that there is a great meaning behind what it means to be a bodybuilder when the Holy Spirit has gifted you with some of these gifts. So flip over to Romans chapter 12 verse 7 and 8. And we're going to look at a few of these and we're going to talk about them. The first one is this. It says, if it is serving, let him serve. Okay? We already talked about teaching. We don't need to go there. But if it is serving, let him serve. Now, we all know what it means to serve, right? It's pretty simple. It's straightforward. We're going to serve. So, the problem is it's so simple and it's so straightforward, we sometimes do it. Right? There's all kinds of services that that can be done inside the body of the church. Um, even right now, there, there's a lot of things that we, that we could be doing better, right? If God um, allowed you and he's equipped you with the ability to serve uh, this body, then there, there's plenty of work to be done. You just got to say, hey, um, 
Where is it? Um, come, come ask me. There's plenty of things that can be done inside the church. There's plenty of services. We got, we got child care back there. You know, that, that's a great ministry of service is looking after the, the little ones coming up. Because, you know, sometimes we, we go a little long, don't we? How many of you parents have volunteered so far to be back there with all those little kids? Now, <laughs> can it get a little wild and rambunctious? Can those little ones just, you know, just be so full of joy and so full of energy that, it, that at the end of the service, your hair is just like, pew, like you've stuck your finger in a light socket and you just cannot wait till church is over with because those kids, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you haven't been back there, right? On Monday morning, or on Mondays, we have Little K, and if you have not been a part of Little K, it's an hour and a half of some of the greatest ministry that can, can, that can go on. It's also an hour and a half of you really questioning, you, questioning are you a Christian or not? <laughs> These kids don't listen, right? And you're like, you, you know, please listen, please stay in line, let's do this activity, that activity, and they're like, they're everywhere. So how big of a Christian are you? How good are you? Cut your teeth on some child care. We'll see how big and bad you are. Anybody up for that? Any, any takers tomorrow, 3.30 from 5? Any takers? Going once? Okay, that's, what I, that's, that's right. All the guys are, is not my spiritual gifting, brother. That is not it. Amen, I understand sometimes. But serving... You know, there, there's many, many different areas that, that we could be doing stuff better inside the church. But when we serve, we don't need to serve out of a, a um, not just out of a necessity, right? It ought to be something that's inside of you that's a willing vessel that's saying, you know what, God has placed this in me. I, I just want to do something inside the church. You know, I'm so thankful for um, just Richard and Julia. Man, th th they call me and... Man, they're so eager to serve. They're so eager to serve. Richard, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? <laughs> I have an altar call. Yeah, I was just about to say, we'll have an altar call for liars in a minute. 71 years old. Now, Richard, have you ever, in your 71 years before you come to the chapel, have you ever had much to do with the computer? No. But he was so willing to serve, he, he was like, man, what is, what is something I could be doing? And so, like, two years ago, he volunteers to go back there and try to, you know, keep up with the songs and go with the scripture and punch it. He's never seen a computer, but he had the heart to serve. He just wants to serve, be a part. He wants to do something. He sees the need. He just wants to do it. He wants to, to meet the need that the church is having. And that's something that God gives us. And, and, and you know, some of you... You, you've come to me with different things, and I, I believe that, that God's speaking to you, saying, hey, he wants you to serve, you know. How many have been in the female bathroom? Well, none of you guys have. Has any female went to the bathroom here at the church? Have you gotten scraped by the cheese grater on the wall? That's how Jamie Lawrence described it. Right? There's some things that we can do. We can do some little upkeep, you know, make it a little bit, you know, something. You, hey, it's just that. You know, you go in there and you touch it, guys. Touch it. It's sharp. I didn't realize how sharp it was. I wasn't in there. Man, that stuff's sharp. If somebody fell, man, that, it hurt. But that's a part of service. You could scrape that off. And some of you have gotten a lot of, you know, a training and do this in your house and stuff like that. Of, you know, repairing the walls, blowing the stuff on there and. You know, hey, that, that, that's another service that you can do for the church. Why? Not just for you, but it's going to be, it's going to create an environment that's, yes, it's functional, but could it be better? Absolutely. Absolutely. So different services that, are, you know, hey, I got a service project that I, I know not too many people are so eager to do. And really, I've, I've left stuff undone for a long time because I'm really hoping that one day somebody's going to get so sick and tired of seeing it that they'll just say, hey, uh, brother, let me help you with that. How many of you know that we got a, a Holy Spirit-filled sign? Huh? Anybody see the Holy Spirit-filled sign? Can you, you know, it is filled with the Spirit. You can't read a thing on it, can you? No, you can't. You're, many of you are thinking, man, why don't he change that? Well, I don't change it because of one 
one reason. I'm trying to get under some of your skin to go out there and say, hey, uh, let me help you with that. I'm, uh, if you read it out loud, that's what it would sound like. It would, it would really, I got the meaning of it behind it, but you know what? I'm telling you what, it's, it's a mess. But it's a service that, you know what, if you just want to do something for the church, hey, there you go. You know, we have uh, Danny Wayne Scott. He's over um, the kind of the grounds, you know, and it's probably going to be hard for him. Thank God for this rain that we've gotten. You know, the grounds needs to be kept. He's a deacon. He's over that. Hey, if, you, if you're handy with uh, doing stuff outside, praise God. Get out there and, and, and get to work. We got stuff. Um, we, thankfully, our play set out there has been a lifesaver, but, you know, they played on it so much that, now big rocks are showing, so we, you know, we could have some somebody that just hey knows how to make that a little safer. Could go out there and hey, there's a service project. So there's all kinds of stuff that you can do inside the church to make it safer, to make it uh, better, to make it more functionable. But it's just having that willing heart, having that willing heart. Uh, they, they often say a heart of a volunteer is, is the strongest of all because the, uh, someone that wants to volunteer all the time I really believe has especially inside the church has that supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit to serve the body they want to serve the body they want to look after the needs of the body not, not so much teach them they just want to you know, make the little things a little bit better Okay. so serving it says as we serve let us serve with the utmost, right? In First Peter um, 4, uh, 11, it says, uh, anyone who serves should do it with the strength God provides. Don't rely on your own strength. Use the strength that God provides. God will give you the strength to keep going. He will give you the strength to endure. Even when you think it's a meaningless task, it's still a service for the body. And, and I, I know it, it doesn't go undone, but there, there's also other things. There's other services that, that need to to be done you know just some people that say hey maybe my service is to pray you know one of you know Larry said it this morning how, how much time do you spend praying how much time do you spend praying for you know on Sunday morning for for God to move in our services on Sunday morning hey we need people that will say hey I just want I, I really feel led to pray for the entire service on Sunday you know and and some of you know it doesn't matter how old or how young you are right I believe that God has really equipped and really has laid a foundation in some, in some um, older people's lives that they can pray and pray fervently and, and, and passionately for what goes on during the service. I really believe that. You know, Julia, she's one of them. You know, I, I tell her all the time, Julia, uh, don't get discouraged because your arm's broke and you think you can't come to church and anything. What you need to do, I believe God has called you to pray. And she does it. She's faithful but it could be others, right? Or it could be others. And when we're going through this stuff this morning, um, yeah, this is something that's, you know, real big and, and, and bold and out in front of you, but with, if something I, we come across this morning, if you feel led in that area, I, I, I want to encourage you to step out in that area and start walking in it to meet the needs of the church so the church may be edified, so we can continue to reach out to the lost and bring them in. Is that all right? Does anybody want to reach lost people? I believe God, his, his grand sign was for us to go and, and preach the gospel and then make disciples of those that come in, right? We can't expect them to be uh, mature Christians when they, when they come, the lost when they come in. They're not. They're not mature. They don't know hardly anything about their babies. The Word calls them babies, so it's our job to, to build them up to get them plugged in, to get them working. Maybe uh, keep going in verse 7. If it's teaching, let him teach. Uh, verse 8, it's this. It's, um, if it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. Now, don't we love that? If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him do so generously. Now, if we're really thinking about what that means right there, it's not one that's just like... Um, generosity goes more than just how much it is, okay? 
it's not only the, the amount, but also the, um, the, the heart that's behind it. Uh, the Bible says God loves, a, gen- uh, God loves a, a cheerful giver. Thank you very much. A cheerful giver. One that's sowing in the lives of other people cheerfully, not grudgingly, not out of necessity, but cheerfully. He wants, he, that's what the kind of people that he's looking for. You know what? Maybe that's you. Maybe you're just like, you know what? Um, I'm not, I don't have a, I'm not called into the mission field. I'm not called to evangelism, but you know what? I just really have a heart for Dean and Donnie. They're going to that, and God just wants me to sow into them. Well, sow into them. Give financially. Give uh, whatever they need, right? Maybe it's not finances. Maybe it's a uh, uh, toilet paper or, or uh, things that, you know, are just off the wall that we can't think about, right? Whatever they need, you're just going to sow into them. Why? Because that's what God has given you to do. Now, God, I want you to understand, God doesn't need your money, right? He doesn't. He does not need your money. But you need to give your money to God. Why? Because it's competing for first place with God. It's competing for his spot in your, in your life. And as you give and you give cheerfully unto God, man, I, I believe he just opens those doors for you. And man, it, it's just a great blessing. You're never more blessed than when you're walking in your spiritual gift. And if, if it's giving to others, give so cheerfully. Do so generously. Not grudgingly. Uh, it goes on to say, if it's leadership, let him govern diligently. Now, a lot of times in leadership, we, we look to uh, the shepherds of the flock and also uh, the deacons. And it says, if you're going to be a leader, let him govern diligently. So, <coughs> contrary to our, our government, <laughs> the government of, of the church needs to do this diligently. We, we need to be passionate about what God has called us to do right? Uh, if we're an appointed leader in the church, we, we need to be making those uh, inroads to not just lead, but to train up so that we can push out other leaders in the church, right? And, and so that's, that's a part of, of, of what that means. If you're going to lead, do so in a way that's not just going to, when you're gone, we'll leave a hole, but when you're gone, somebody else can step up and, and get in your spot, and the mission will keep going. You know, in the army, that's what we had to do. When you was appointed a leader in the army, your job wasn't just to do your job, but it was to train up and equip the ones under you so that when you're gone, they can do the job. That's a part of being a leader. And also a thing about leadership is a lot of times they're servers, right? They have that heart of service and they lead by serving one another. Um, Let's see. Now, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do, do it cheerfully. Now, what does this word mean? Mercy. How many of you know what it means to show mercy to somebody? Anyone? Yeah. What does it mean to show grace to somebody? man what's that yeah even when they don't deserve it you give it the fact of the matter is that there's many people that are going to come through these doors that don't have a great background that have come up in a pretty horrible situation and they have even done some pretty horrible things but they're coming to get to, to, to draw closer to, to the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit has really just empowered you to, with this, this mercy gift of showing mercy. And I believe that, that that's one of the things that he's really blessed this church with because I don't know too many people that come in here that don't feel the love and mercy that, that God has given them. But they need to feel that. They need to feel accepted because we're no better than they are. We were all sinners. We were all uh, destitute without our Lord and Savior. We was all doing terrible things before we came to know Christ. And for some reason, we, we think that because we're cleaned up and we're good and we're going to church now that everybody that comes through the door should be cleaned up and good and going to church. But it's not that way. So we've got to show mercy. Are they going to mess up? Yeah, they're going to mess up. Are they going to do things wrong? Yes, they're going to do things wrong. But you show them mercy. 
You show them grace. Why? Because that's the very thing that God showed you. He showed you mercy and grace when you didn't deserve it. Matter of fact, it was, it, was, it was that very thing, his mercy and grace for us that sent Jesus to the cross. So how can we, in any shape or form, neglect to show mercy to anybody that comes in? We can't. And so if, if, if the Holy Spirit has in, empowered you to, to be merciful to people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, hey, do it. Do whatever God tells you to do and don't be afraid to do it. As, as Don shared this morning, don't let your pride stand in the way of, of doing what God has called you to do. A lot of times our pride is what keeps us from showing mercy to somebody because we know they don't deserve it. And we, we have a lot of anger and animosity towards them. Hey, I mean, dude, this, this is like hitting me in the face when God says, hey, show mercy to them. I'm, I don't want to. I know what they've done. And then he reminds me, yeah, I know what you've done. Right? Good Christian boy and girl, huh? Yeah, I know the thoughts you had this morning. You didn't want to be here. It's going to be another one of those services that might run late. huh? Praise God we're eating here. You should be happy about that, huh? Hey, you know, speaking of service, that's a great service right there. Cooking. One of the best things I've ever, one of the, the, the best stories that I've ever had on the evangelism side of things happened when this little old lady was so mad at the power team for coming in and putting stuff all over her church, the, the boards, the smelt like kerosene inside the church because there was fire and all this stuff. She was so mad, so, so upset because there was loud music, heaven forbid loud music, right inside the, the church and People wearing tank tops and stuff like that. Oh, she was furious. And she's like, I don't know nothing about this. I don't even know if what you're doing is godly or not. And Craig says, well, I like what we're doing to reach the lost a lot more than you're doing nothing. And what she decided to do right after that, she got all those decision cards that were made, and she started baking cookies for those people, and she started serving the church. She got up after sitting in the pew for 50-some-odd years in the same spot, bless her heart, and she's finally started serving as God intended her to serve. And she took cookies to every one of those people that made a decision. She couldn't drive, so what did she do? She called up one of the deacons. Huh? <laughs> made him drive her. She didn't wait. She didn't wait. She got proactive, right? And she started serving. And I, I believe what she did drew those people back because she showed them mercy through her service. What about you? Are you, showing, are you showing people mercy through your service? Are you doing it in a way that's going to glorify God? Are you doing it just because it has to be done and nobody else is doing it? So you're going to do it just because it's a, it's a need that has to be met. So you're, you're not even happy about it. You're just going to do it anyway. I don't think there's any joy or any kind of reward in that. Matter of fact, it says in the, in the, in there's a judgment day that's coming and everything that we're done is going to be tried and tested with fire. And only those things that are done for Jesus Christ and out of a pure heart, those are the things that are going to last. Everything else is going to go up in flames. So when God moves you to do something, do it. The second, the second group of uh, bodybuilders is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And it says, And in the church God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others. Now, help others. Help others. Help others. It's another one of those things that it goes along with service, and it goes along with mercy, and it, because you have a, uh, this mercy and service, it's, it's to help others. You see somebody that's struggling, so you want to go along, and you just want to help them out. Look, this isn't just... Uh, when, when you have these ideas and, and these things that l are laid on your heart to help somebody, it's not just because you're, you're a good boy or a good girl or you're you know, a good man or a good woman. It's because the Holy Spirit has, is empowering you to go help somebody. So go help them. Go help them right then and there. When the Holy Spirit starts to move in your life and say, hey, these people need some help, don't put it off. Just go and do it. Don't try to put it off on your husband, right? Has any wives tried to put something off on their husband ever? 
Oh, oh, Larry's pointing her out. Craig's not saying nothing. He's scared. Right? No, nobody wants to say anything about that. Mm -mm. There's a difference. Larry's been married forever, and Craig, it's only a few years, right? But when it goes to helping others, hey, that's, that, that, that's part of it. When the Holy Spirit prompts you to do it, it's not your husband's job, it's your job. Vice versa, husbands, quit putting stuff on your wife, right? So, <laughs> she, Larry just got knocked out. Y'all didn't see that, but I did, right? So many times we, we, we get so busy in ourselves that we say, oh, this needs to be done. Honey, can you do that? See, we're sweet about it, right? Honey, can you go do this? The Lord needs it done. Can you go? To, no, get off of your rear end and you go do it. It's a help. God is, is encouraging you to go and help. So go be a help to others. That's a spiritual gift. You're going you're gonna to have a great reward. Now, going on a little bit further there, um, those with the gift of administration. Now, listen. Whew. This is something where if uh, God is just gifted you with the ability to uh, make stuff for those people that are wanting to serve, right? Uh, ha having those um, sheets and everything filled out so that you, when, when you get to the church and if you're going to serve in this area, you know exactly what needs to be done. Uh, it, it, you know, that administrative duty, uh, that, that's a tough one, right? Because it feels like you're getting all the pressure on you, but yet uh, it needs to be done in the body. It need, the, you know, those, those needs, you know, maybe God has said, hey, look, these are the needs that need to be met. Y and you get a list, right? And all of a sudden now, now you can start assigning people to them, right? And, and you just have a great ability to minister different things that's going to um, upbuild the body of Christ to, to continue to build the church. Now, that's a great gift. That's a real great gift. Now, there's a lot of times I think that I try to walk in this administration gift and I, I, I'm... I don't feel like I'm a real great administrator, right? I, I have a hard time asking people to do things. That's my problem. I, I, you know, I don't want to bother anybody. And so instead of going out and asking anybody, I'll just do it myself. Anybody there? That's why we need some administrators. They don't have a problem asking anybody anything, Rhonda. Yeah. It is a gift from the Lord. That's right. For us to walk in. What it will do, it will create peace. It will create an atmosphere of what we can all dysfunction, and it will be better, and stuff will be getting met, stuff will be getting done, and so on and so forth. Amen? Now, the last one is this on bodybuilding. Ezekiel, or no, excuse me, Exodus 31, verses 1 through 5. And uh, don't you love the Old Testament? Don't you love the names in the Old Testament? Yeah, me too. Flip over there. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was singing a song about this guy's name because I didn't want to mess it up. And here, here we are. And it says this, and it says in verse 31, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen... Be Beazazel, that's pretty close. The son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. Huh. To make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. To cut out and set stone. To work in wood. And to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. Now, there's things, not only does God bless with all those other things that we talked about, but the Holy Spirit also empowers us to do some very unique skills and crafts. Now, I, I really believe that in this, this ties over even to, I don't y'all love the worship guys? Not, not me, but you know, Danny and Kevin and Danny and Cynthia and Heather and Kelly, they do a great job. They, they really do. Guys, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been a lot of places, and there, there's an anointing on them that just is, is just so for real. 
And it's because I, I really believe they're, they're, they're walking in of a skill and a craft that the Holy Spirit has gifted them in. And I'm so thankful for the, their service. I'm so thankful for their service. But you know what? There, there's other things. And, you know, as, as this church body, as, as it stands, you know, there, there's a lot of us that have uh, really good abilities to, to work with wood or, you know, know how to, know how to do some plumbing. I'm, I'm getting better at my plumbing projects. Uh, but there, there's different things that need to be, just be taken care of. And he's given, and I believe the Holy Spirit has given us those gifts to do it. That's one of those things, that's one of those gifts and talents that kind of go hand in hand. You know, that could also go over into your, your workplace or your job or your profession, whatever you're doing. But it also really boils over into the church. When you start really sowing that gift and that talent into the church, it's going to be an amazing thing. You know, here, here we, we talk about, you know, new church plans. And, you know, we, we found one that we're really excited and comfortable with. You know what? And not only was this church built by the members, because God put them here, Right? He still has people here that know how to do those things. Maybe it's to, to lay a floor, uh, to, to hang sheetrock or, or whatever. God has given you an ability to do some kind of skill or some kind of craft that's going to edify not just the church body, but when you're doing it for Him, it's going to build you up too. There's no greater reward and no greater satisfaction that you get in life than when you're doing something for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And your heart is there with Him 100% of the way. You feel accomplished. You feel like you've done something. And so that's why the Holy Spirit has, has chosen and He's done these things and He's put these, these different gifts to build up the body. And I'm talking about, let's talk about Believer's Chapel, Okay. If we're going to really be effective, an, an effective ministering uh, church, then we need to embrace all these things that God has given us and walk in them. As in the last part of that, Peter, chapter 4. I'll go back there again. I'll, I'll end with this. But it, it, it's, it's the why. Why all, why all this needs to be done. In the last part there, and it says, so that in all things, all these things, all these things that I mentioned this morning, God may be praised. God may be th praised through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. We want people to see Jesus Christ in our body and to praise our God. Amen? That's what it's about. And it says, to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. That's the why. If that's your why, because you want to bring God praise, you want to bring Him honor and glory, hey, then I encourage you to embrace whatever gift that God has blessed you with to serve the body and to step out and walk as He's told you to walk. Amen? Amen. Well, you can use your Bibles and I'll close this out. Heavenly Father, just thank you once again for, Lord, just uh, continuing to... Uh, Push us, Lord, to seek your face, but to be used by you as well. Maybe you're sitting here this morning, and you know what? You want to know more about Jesus Christ because there's something going on in your heart right now. You, you thought you was here just to, to, you know, go through the motions one more time, but God says, you know what? Today, I, I'm showing you my son. Today I'm giving you the faith. I'm blessing you with faith. I'm giving you that in your heart. You know, you believe in your heart. The belief is birthed in your heart. And if God has given you faith to believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, today, it's not, a, it's not about you. It's about, it's about God. And He's calling you. You're lost. And He's calling you home. If that's you this morning, will you simply just confess that this morning? Will you confess that? Amen. Well, God, we thank you and we praise you that you're yours. Father, I ask now that your Holy Spirit just continue to lead us 
and empower us and equip us to do your good work so that you may be praised through your son, Jesus Christ. To him be the honor and glory forever and ever. Father, I ask now that as we get ready to take part in this meal, God, you bless the meal, you bless that food for the nourishment of our bodies, and not only that, Lord, that you also just bless those hands that have prepared it. Father, thank you for this, this congregation. Thank you that for all that you've done. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.